Happy Sunday, all you minties! This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and join me today for an advanced look at the Superman by Grant Morrison omnibus from DC Comics. Let's get started! And welcome back, everybody. Now, this book is solicited to come out on February 23rd at both the direct market and the book market. So direct market, again, being places like CheapGraphicNovels.com, Tales of Wonder, In Stock Trades, and the book market being places like Amazon and Barnes & Noble. So both places, DC is now releasing these on the same date. Some people overseas, love my Canadian brothers and sisters and my European brothers and sisters, you all probably already have this book available. I know that DC sometimes lets those other countries get the books ahead of time so that's awesome so this may not be a first look at for some of you all but regardless here is superman by grant morrison omnibus this was a variant cover by rag morales let's look at the spine here we have the image from action comics number one and it is a rag morales image and superman here let's hold it up this way so you all can see it a little bit better DC logo in the back by Grant Morrison. It's interesting that they're just giving Grant Morrison credit and no one else. But I guess when you're going to sell the book, you got to make it a Grant Morrison omnibus centric. So got to put Grant Morrison's name on there. Here is the back. Pretty interesting with the bullets uh, bouncing off of him because it looks like it's leading to some font. But they really don't. The ISBN down here in this book retails for $75. Let's look at it underneath the dust jacket. I do love this image. So underneath the dust jacket, we have this image of Superman. And interesting that it's not the full image, but they also decided to keep the spine there. Okay. Pretty interesting move. Now, let's look inside of the book and talk about what this contains. Okay, let's get this open. Here's your bookend pages. It's got a picture of Superman from the cover with a red tone to it. Probably because of our red sun giving him powers. Superman by Grant Morrison, Omnibus. Grant Morrison's name all over the place. But really, I think Sholy Finch... Finch? I thought it was Fish. Is it Sholy Finch? Huh. Okay. I could be mistaken. I always thought it was Sholy Fish. Regardless, Sholy is the other big writer on the book. And I think probably should have gotten as much credit as they gave Grant Morrison. Uh, Max Landis writes a little bit towards the end, but Sholy wrote the backups. You have the artwork of Rag Morales, Andy Kubert, Brad Walker, those being really the main ones. Brad Anderson supplying most of the colors in here. Jordi Belair also joining Brad, as well as other colorists. So let's look in here and talk about the book. All right. Starts off with a table of contents. Love that. Page 7. Action Comics number one. And I'm going to be talking about what this collects and why they renumber things. Uh, page 39, Action Comics number two. Awesome. So here we have that picture from the spine from Rag Morales. And it is the cover to issue number one. And if you've noticed, by the way, let's go back one more time. They give you the page number where these chapters start or where the issue starts. So Action Comics number 14 starts on page 487. And as I mentioned, a lot of these issues had backup stories. So Superman by Grant Morrison. And let's not forget Rag Morales. So what is this? What's, what's going on? Why Action Comics number one? So there was this event called Flashpoint in DC Comics. And they took that time to reinvent the character of Superman that has been around since 1938. And they decided, you know what? Let's retell his origin. Let's retcon everything that had happened before Superman and let's start over from scratch. And that's what this is. Whereas characters like Batman really didn't start over from scratch after Flashpoint. Batman, Bruce Wayne was still Batman, Bruce Wayne. All the things that happened to him in his life like Nightfall and all that still happened. Superman didn't get the same treatment. Superman started over. So... There were two series. There was Action Comics and Superman Comics. Superman was at first written by George Perez and artwork by Nicola Scott. And then Grant Morrison wrote Action Comics with Rag Morales on artwork. And what Action Comics did was serve the purpose of telling stories from the past. So that's why you see this type of Superman. This is Kal-El or Clark Kent going into Metropolis for the first time. He's never met Lex Luthor. He doesn't know who Lois Lane is or Jimmy Olsen. He doesn't work uh, for the Daily Planet. So he's wearing jeans and this is his outfit. He's 
fighting crime. He's stopping bad things from happening. He's misunderstood by the U.S. government. He's loved by the people most of the time. There's also some misunderstandings there. But this retells how he came to Metropolis for the first time and is reintroducing characters like Lex Luthor, Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, as well as some of his villains like, well, Lex Luthor I've already mentioned, but for example, Brainiac is in here. There are other villains that show up in kind of mysterious ways, but I will let you find out who they are because some of them are very surprising. But this is what the artwork looks like. So the important thing to get out of here is that, yes, this is a retcon of everything that had happened. So it's a retelling, a reimagining of Superman again for brand new readers. So if you've never read a single Superman story, this is his new origin. The confusing thing is, is this the su Superman from Rebirth? And the short answer is no, it's not. The long answer is, holy crap, that would take another video. Who is that Superman? Well, that... Never mind. Let's, let's just stick to this. So, during the New 52, there were 52 issues released, and this particular omnibus right here only collects the first 18 issues. So it collects Action Comics 1 through 18, issue number 0, and then Action Comics annual number 1. It retails for $75, like I mentioned, and has 680 pages. So it's just the first 18 issues, including issue 0. The rest of them are available in trade paperback format if you want to keep continuing the story of this young Superman. And eventually he catches up to the current Superman that was being told by, like, I first, as I mentioned, George Perez. I think Dan Jurgens took over the run eventually. But um, this is Action Comics by Grant Morrison, reinventing the character of Superman, telling his origin from the beginning. Like, there's flashbacks. This is Gene Haas, beautiful artwork, by the way. Uh, telling the origin again of what happened to Krypton, how he was sent here to planet Earth. It's an origin story that you've seen over and over again. But DC decided to go with Morrison to head write this now morrison is no stranger to superman he's written things like all-star superman man if you've read that and you're expecting that those type of stories yeah uh, these are a little bit different they are not like all-star superman so and honestly before i go any further they're not like grant morrison's stories where they're complicated and, and convoluted it's pretty straightforward yes there's some bouncing around with the legion of superheroes with uh different times but, I mean, it's not your typical Grant Morrison story, like from the pages of uh, Doom Patrol or some of his other independent work. Or some of Morrison's other independent work. Let me just show you some of the artwork later on. So Andy Kubert has a couple fill-in issues, but for the most part, it is Rag Morales. Um, the backup stories, as I was saying, are all done by Sholy Finch. I really thought it was Sholy Finch. Okay, so I'm not crazy. It's Sholy Fish. Why did they credit... Sholy Finch. Is there a Sholy Finch? Am I am I going crazy? Is it, it's the same person. Sholy Fish, Sholy Finch. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that is a goof up. Um, they didn't catch or they didn't credit the right person or Sholy changed Sholy's last name. I don't know. But if you know in the comments what the last name is supposed to be, please let me know. Uh, down below in the comment section, but I could have sworn yeah, Sholy Fish is who I remember writing these backup stories You have Chris Cross, Chris Sprouse doing the backup artwork. There is a fill-in artist here named Ben Oliver Love Ben Oliver's art nothing against Rag Morales, but you know, Rag Morales is not one of my favorite artists. It was pretty interesting that they chose him uh, to do this story, <laughs> reinventing Superman. Here is Superman from Earth 23. So there's multiverse stories in here uh, so prepare for that. Yeah, Sholy Fish. Coley Hammer also supplies some of these art um, artists um, backup stories. Let me see if I can find that Ben Oliver to show you all what I'm talking about. But yes, you don't need to have read anything prior to this. You don't even need to have read uh, Flashpoint. Um, this is the only story that you need to read, and this is Ben Oliver's art right here. Ben Oliver is, of course, an artist that I absolutely love. And I don't see enough of his work out there. But let's keep flipping through some of these pages. There are some nice little Easter eggs in here for people that have been reading Superman for a long time. But don't expect full-blown characters to just show up and you being reminded of John Byrne's run. Or even classic stories from before the original Crisis. 
So I know that chronologically, and I haven't done a Superman reading order, by the way, that is up on our Patreon as of this Sunday. It's going to be a vote between the Superman reading order or X-Men updated reading order and collected edition. So I'm leaving it up to our patrons to vote for that. Regardless of what they vote for, it's going to be a couple of months worth of work. So on the channel, I'll be having either one of those two and for the next few months. So as I was saying, you don't need to have read anything before this. You don't even need to read Superman, the other ongoing title. This this will do because this takes place in the past. It's not until the other writers come in after Grant Morrison leaves that it catches up to current time. And current time as in New 52. Rebirth is a whole new beast. And uh, man, I hope I have enough time when I do those reading orders to explain why it's a different beast. Oh my gosh, this backup story here with Crypto is just so beautiful. Oh, I love this story. It, 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 it brings me to tears, and I will let you find out why it's a wonderful story, especially if you love animals or you have a pet, or if you're just a fan of the super um, pets. Yes, absolutely. Okay, I think I flipped enough through here. You kind of get the idea of what most of the art looks like in here, and it looks like this because it is Rag Morales doing most of the artwork with, yes, other film artists like Bill and Oliver, um, Cully Hammer, uh, Chris Cross, and then a uh, couple artists doing different um, backup stories. There's a Chris Sprouse story in here, also written by Sholy Fish or Finch. I, I, I'm not letting go of that. Um, because it's, it means a lot to people that have read Legion of Superheroes or Legion, Legionnaires, and Chris Sprouse coming back to do a backup story featuring Legion. Solid. That was a good idea. Let's look in the back here for some extras. All right. The extras are, of course, we kick off with cover galleries. So you have different artists. You have Jim Lee's uh, variant covers. You have the pencils and the finished artwork here. And then you have that Rag Morales cover. This is the first image I remember seeing of New 52 uh, Superman. And I remember a lot of people were upset. He was wearing jeans. He had a small cape. What's going on? Turns out it was in the past before he got his costume. That's what's going on. I'll let you find out how he gets his costume. You have Ethan Van Skyver, Gary Frank doing variant covers. And we're not going to look at all of them. So when you get this, you yourself can be surprised. Let's look in the back here. The cover process. Uh, behind the scenes. The character designs. I was right. Earth 23 by Gene Ha. And skipping some of the surprises. More variant cover sketches. And more variant cover sketches. And that is it. Let's talk about the build of this book. So the very first thing you may or may not have noticed is that there are no page numbers. So... That's happened before with some of the DC Omnis. They don't have page numbers, making it more difficult for you to go back to the table of contents and trying to find a specific issue. Get yourself a bookmark. I always suggest that when I tell people uh, about no page numbers. Makes it difficult to go back and try to find an issue because let's say you're on Action Comics number 13. Okay, let's find page 455. We can't because there are no page numbers. All right. Let's find issue number 13. If there are no page number, let's do that. Well, you can't find issue number 13 that easy. Why? Because this is issue number zero, by the way. I just know because I remember this. But there are no issue numbers. They don't tell you the issue in the front of the book. They don't tell you the issue number in the back of the cover. So get a bookmark and ignore the table of contents. It is done and collected in reading order in the way that you're supposed to read it because issue zero does take place after this issue right here. So you're okay with that. Let's look at the build. The book has sewn binding and there is your eye. So what I see down here is a, a little bit, and I'm, let me pull this down so you can see it. It's a little bit of glue, probably more than they needed to use. And that's what's weighing the book and the pages down some. So it does, lay over nice here but when you get to the front pages tend to try to close up on you not bad at all though i mean we've seen worse and that's probably got to do a lot with the page numbers i mean we're not looking at a book that's 1100 pages we're looking at a book that's only 680 let's look in the back here we are towards the end of the book where the variants are and the pages want to close up on you basically because of this bookend page right here it's heavier than your glossy paper 
so it, it tends to want to close up on you but over time the more you read it you will crack that glue that is normal for anybody that ever hears those sounds and the book will stay open better as far as any gutter loss here's what it looks like in the middle of the book so not very much gutter loss you can see most of the artwork Towards the front of the book, you do get minimal gutter loss. You don't see the tip of his shoe, for example. Now, that's not a deal breaker for, for me, but I mean, it could be a deal breaker for some people. Is it better than the trade paperback or standard size hardcover? Well, this is what the standard size trade paperback looks like. You don't even get the option of pulling this down there. Just there's no more artwork the way that these pages were scanned. So again, this is what it looks like. It lays over a little bit nicer but you get more artwork here and you have the option of pulling this down so you can see the tip of his shoe okay just i never thought i would be doing a comparison between a trade paper bag and an omnibus but here you go there's the original trade paper bag of superman in action comics volume one and the omnibus just so you can get a better idea i am holding both of the pages down because we're looking towards the beginning and of course i'm looking at a trade paper bag but you get a better idea of what the artwork looks like and what you're missing from each of the books and towards the end of the book you get this two page spread here i have to hold down a little bit but like i said over time this will get better so again minimal gutter loss right there but that as they say is that now when the book comes out don't forget to check out our sponsor CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books, with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and the build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this book up, if you have the trades, if you have the hardcovers, if you didn't like the run, if you love the run, and you're upgrading, if you've never read it, if you're a fan of Grant Morrison, if you love All-Star Superman, well, if you love All-Star Superman, this is a little bit different. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Please don't forget to hit that like button. Ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We can be found on Redbubble and on Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel. And our Patreon has different tiers. Check out all these end credits. Thank you again to all our patrons. More importantly, all of you, stay healthy, stay safe out there, and much love.